It's day two of the NATO summit in Lithuania. Let me show you a picture that sums up the takeaway so far. Look at this. It was clicked during the family photo after the round table. Look at President Zelensky. He's standing all alone. The NATO leaders are talking and having a good laugh. The Ukrainian leader is all alone, at war, and at the mercy of the West. This should be a reality check for Ukraine. They were led on and into a war, only to be left out of NATO. Today will be another day of frustration for them. Ukraine wants to be a member, and it wants it now. But NATO says you're not ready. And this is how it played out. First came the round table. NATO leaders arrived, clicked pictures, and got down to business. Their agenda had three things, Ukraine, Russia, and China. Then there were multiple bilaterals. Turkey as Erdogan met Joe Biden and Rishi Sunak. Francis Macron met leaders from Australia and New Zealand. It was like a diplomatic roulette. In the end came the joint statement, and with it, Ukraine's hopes were dashed. Let me quote what it says. We will be in a position to extend an invitation to Ukraine to join the alliance when allies agree and conditions are met. And what are these conditions? The statement doesn't say. But NATO leaders have raised multiple issues, like ending the war, reforming government agencies, cracking down on corruption. These are the conditions. NATO says, do all of this, and you can be a member. But this is a setback for Ukraine. A membership after 10 years doesn't help. Neither do vague commitments. Kiev wants clarity and intent from NATO, maybe a timetable on how long membership will take. Instead, this is what they got. There is a full-fledged war. Uh, and therefore, uh, I think all allies agree that when a war is going on, uh, uh, that's not the time for uh, 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 making Ukraine a full member of the alliance. So how is Zelensky taking it? As you would expect, he probably knew what was coming. Before landing in Lithuania, he had called NATO's position absurd and weak. But he hasn't given up. Earlier today, he arrived at the summit venue for day two of the talks. He was asked about his expectations, and this is what he said. I think the invitation to NATO, and uh, um, we want to be on the same page with everybody, with all, all the understanding. And for today, what we, what, we, what we hear and understand that we'll have this invitation when security measures will allow, yes. I know it sounds like a broken record, but it also shows you how desperate Ukraine is. Their counter-offensive is not going to plan. It's too slow and too costly. Plus, Russia is striking back hard. On Tuesday, they hit three Ukrainian cities with airstrikes, Kiev, Odessa, and Kherson. So Zelensky has boxed himself into a corner. His entire strategy is based on Western and NATO support, their weapons, their political backing, their money. If NATO is half-hearted, Zelensky is in trouble. And Russia knows this. Their leaders are building more pressure on NATO. Look at what their former president, Dmitry Medvedev, said. I'm quoting again. The completely crazy West could not come up with anything else. In fact, it's a dead end. World War III is getting closer. This is a former Russian president and a Putin confidant. Their foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, has also given a statement. He says the war will end when NATO stops using Ukraine to defeat Russia. Now, both these men are close to Putin. Their statements sum up the Russian mentality. A, they're not backing down, and B, if the West doesn't stop supporting Ukraine, things could get out of hand. The fighting could spill over. More countries could get dragged in. And as Medvedev said, there could be World War III. This sort of language is meant to trigger. You hear World War III, you shudder. And that's exactly what Russia is trying to do. The question is, how will NATO respond to all of this? Well, they're not giving the membership yet, but they are giving weapons. Germany, France, and the US have announced more weapons. The G7 nations are also considering a long-term security package. What does that mean? Something similar to what Israel has. They get military aid worth $3.8 billion every year, but no collective defense. The G7 could offer something similar to Ukraine, I guess anything but NATO membership. While the summit focused on today's war, it also discussed future ones. I'm talking about the showdown with China. The NATO statement mentions China 16 times, 16 times in one statement. Listen to this. The People's Re Republic of China stated ambitions and coercive policies challenge our interests, security, and values. NATO is seriously looking at the Indo-Pacific. Four countries from the region attended the summit, Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, and Japan. 
Naturally, China was not happy. It has opposed the invitation to these countries. It has also promised a quote-unquote resolute response if NATO moves in this direction. China state media is doing the heavy lifting. The editorials are fuming at NATO, the usual stuff about Cold War mentality. So looking back, what do we make of this NATO summit? Until last year, this alliance was fading into obscurity. French President Macron had even called it brain dead. But now it's alive. Alive, kicking and expanding. Two new members have joined the alliance in the last few months. It has also set its eyes on the Indo-Pacific. None of this was supposed to happen. The Ukraine war was set to be about a country's sovereignty and its right to choose, about powerful countries bullying their neighbors. But look what it has become now. The West has used the war to fuel its military complex, to add new members to NATO, to revive an irrelevant alliance. Meanwhile, Ukraine stands alone and desperate. I know this war has produced many defining photographs, but this one of Zelensky, will haunt Ukrainians the most.